Uh, next presenter is uh, P Peter Ledwidge, Managing Director and CEO of Maco Gold. Peter uh, is a geologist with over 30 years experience in exploration and mining. Uh, his career has focused primarily on gold in Canada, Africa, and Australia. Uh, prior to founding Maco Gold, Peter was a senior manager with ASX uh, listed company Orbis Gold, where he secured all of Orbis's permits in Burkina Faso and Cote d'Ivoire. Peter played a critical role in the discovery of three gold deposits, including the Buongo mine. Since starting uh, Maco Gold, Peter has led the company on two gold discovery, and most recently, a manganese uh, discovery in Cote d'Ivoire. Peter is fluent uh, in bilingually in French and uh, has been working uh, the African language uh, on the majority of West Africa and has established and maintained good reputation uh, contacts in West Africa. Please join me in welcoming Peter. Good morning and thanks for coming to listen to our presentation. Uh, so I'll be talking about uh, advancing our gold, uh, gold resource in uh, Cote d'Ivoire, as well as our recent manganese discovery, uh, which uh, we're pretty excited about. Uh, here's a disclaimer. Uh, so investment highlights is uh, on our NAPGE flagship NAPGE project, we have 868,000 ounces uh, of gold, and, and we think that's our proof of concept, and, and we're going to move that forward. Uh, so uh, I'll be talking about how we're doing that uh, currently. Uh, in blue, you'll see our uh, recent manganese discovery. That was an opportunistic discovery. As we we're looking for gold, we found manganese. So uh, uh, we'd be a fool not to pay attention to that. So uh, I'll talk about that a, a little bit later. And our exploration team, uh, as, uh, as I was introduced, uh, we're the ex Orbis Gold team, and we made three discoveries. And, in uh, Côte d'Ivoire, uh, uh, sorry, in uh, Burkina Faso. And uh, I'll interrupt myself now, now that I see the DG's back. Uh, uh, je voulais uh, uh, donner la bienvenue à, à tous les délégués de, de l'Afrique de l'Ouest et, et surtout uh, uh, du, uh, des membres qui sont venus de, de Côte d'Ivoire et, et monsieur le directeur général. Um, so, um, I'll just go on to uh, uh, first uh, our corporate overview. Um, so you can see we, we're a small company, got a market cap of you know, 12, uh, 13 million. Uh, like all the junior companies, we've been subject to the, the horrible markets recently. Um, we do have 25% or more institutional ownership. Uh, we've got companies uh, like uh, Toronto-based Dundee, who's got just under 9% of us, Deutsche Balaton out of uh, Germany, uh, Lowell uh, out of uh, Melbourne, so, and Perseus, uh, uh, Perseus Mining has 2.4% of us. So all these uh, long-term shareholders, obviously they're looking for a 5, 10 bag or, or better. Uh, so I'll talk about our team because it's worth uh, talking about, about them. Our, our chairman, our corporate lawyer, he was uh, uh, on the board of Orbis. He was also on the board of Cardinal. Uh, two very successful um, uh, West African uh, takeovers. Uh, we've got Steve Zaninovich as our other director. Uh, he was uh, on the board and COO of Griffin, who got taken over by Taranga. He went and did the feasibility for them, and he's uh, a, a very big asset to us uh, as we're talking about moving the, the company forward. Uh, myself, uh, uh, geologist over 30 years experience, along with uh, my wife and colleague who've been working uh, together for uh, 30 years, as long as we've known each other, uh, and she's a general manager exploration. And then uh, very important to us is our two uh, senior managers in, in Côte d'Ivoire, uh, Bukhari Gigma, who's our chief geologist, and, and Ibrahim Bondo, who's our operations manager. We've been working together for over 10 years together, so uh, it's a very strong IP that, that we have. 
Um, so why we in West Africa, I think uh, most of you people here understand, but if you compare you know, that, that red arrow on that slide, that's the same width as a WA. In Western Australia, there's been, as far as I can uh, research it, somewhere between 250 million to, to uh, uh, 300 million of ounces of gold discovered. Uh, West Africa's had over 400 million ounces discovered to date. Um, and you'll see the map of Burkina, that's where we made three discoveries with, uh, with Oribus. We made one discovery with, uh, uh, with Mako, which we sold uh, a couple of years ago, and we're focusing only on Cote d'Ivoire. Um, so we believe Cote d'Ivoire to be the best jurisdiction in, in West Africa. Uh, many reasons for that, one is it hosts most of the greenstone belts. Uh, but really what's really important to us is the support of the administration. It's politically stable and has no se security issues. Um, the infrastructure is outstanding. You can see a photo of uh, Abidjan, which is the largest city, about five million people. And you can see it's a very modern city. Um, so here's our two projects. Uh, you'll see the Napke flag flagship project. Uh, and, uh, and then the other project that consists of two permits is, is our uh, um, Corogo uh, manganese project. Uh, so the Napke project is 90% owned and we have a, a partner in Cote d'Ivoire that owns the other 10%, which is very good to have when you're in a foreign country. And the Corogo project is 100% owned by MECO. Um, so here's the, the flagship Napke project. You can see it's a, it's a big permit that's 30 kilometers north-south. So we've already discovered uh, two, de two uh, deposits that add up to 868,000 ounces. Uh, our goal is to have two, three, four million ounces. And those little circles, those blue uh, ellipses you see, those are the other targets that we've identified from our auger drilling as well as structural studies and uh, soil sampling and, and all the other information we have at, at our resource. Um, so right now we've only drilled uh, uh, four of those 17 targets outside of the resources. And uh, I'll just show you a little bit of uh, three, three of those targets that we've recently drilled. Uh, first, I'll talk about the metallurgy. So on the Chaga deposit, uh, we've done the preliminary uh, metallurgical testing, and both the oxide and fresh rock came back averaging um, over 94% uh, uh, recoveries. So we know we're not dealing with a refractory deposit. Um, so this is a cutaway, a long section of, of uh, the permit. In, in red, on the inset, you can see the Napke shear. That's where kind of all the gold that we're finding is not too far from there. It's a, it's a big fault. And uh, you can see our two current deposits, Chaga, where we've got 545,000 ounces. And, uh, and then Gogbala, that's got uh, 323,000 ounces. You'll notice Chaga's drilled a little bit more densely than the other one because that was our training ground. So our, we believe our discovery costs will go down going forward because now we know how to do exploration on the permit. Um, so on Gog Ballast South, uh, that's where we just recently did uh, uh, a little bit of RC drilling. You can see those, those spacings and lines as 400 meters. So basically that's one of the targets that we identified uh, and we had done no previous drilling on there. And so we, we put some lines 400 meters apart, and you can see we had some good results, you know, including six meters at six grams. We don't expect every hole to hit, but this is purely exploration. So now what we have to do is drill in between that 400 meters and try to prove up some more resources there. Very much the same thing as Chaga, that's where we have 545,000 ounces. We put uh, one fence of drill holes uh, 200 meters west of our actual resource, and once again, we got a hit of six meters at six grams. So what do we have to do there? We have to do some drilling to the north and south of there, and then uh, when, when we get some results there, assuming we get some, then we'll infill and add something to our resource, hopefully. 
Uh, Chaga North, again, the same, the same story at the bottom end of that map. You can see the, the little northern tip at the Chaga Resource. So we did some 400 meter space lines along there, and you can see that we got some pretty respectable results, both in the current drilling and previous drilling. What we're really excited about, actually, is we, we thought we'd try two, two fences on the western part of, of, the, of, of the greenstone in contact with, with the granite. And even though it's only one meter, we got one meter at 45 grams, and then two kilometers south of there, we got some other you know, uh, numbers uh, that I can't, uh, about four meters or one gram. And, and what's interesting is just about one or two kilometers north of where we got the one meter at 45 grams, is a, a deep artisanal mining site on that contact. So that tells us this could be a target for high-grade gold. Okay, now I'll move on to our manganese discovery. And uh, as I said, we're very excited about that. We announced that just a few months ago. And then so straight away, that was from rock chip sampling. Uh, so we've got two zones that are seven kilometers long, parallel. And, uh, and then so we quickly you know, deployed a, an RC drill rig over there. And, and did uh, 10 holes uh, 50 meters deep. Uh, so the, the holes are averaging over one kilometer spacing apart from each other, and it's not a fence of drill holes. Eight out of those 10 holes hit manganese. Here's like a nice example of that. Going down 50 meters, we got uh, 11 meters at 14 and a half, then 10 meters at 10, uh, three meters at 10 again. And, ended in mineralization. So we're only testing 25 meters of that width over 260 meter width of interpreted manganese. So we think we've got like a very potentially global significant uh, uh, opportunity here. So we're not the first ones to discover uh, manganese in, in Cote d'Ivoire. There's four operating mines. They're run by private companies. And basically what they do is it's a DSO, direct shipping operation, where they, they mine the manganese, then they uh, beneficiate it through mechanical means so that they start you know, with a more or less 10% uh, deposit. And, uh, and then they beneficiate it to 30% or more. And, and then uh, ship it uh, south to the port, and then it goes for steel production. Um, Cote d'Ivoire is a top 10 global uh, manganese producer. Uh, so as I said, we're, we're not the new guys on the block, and, and it's a proven resource in a country where we've been working for several years. So here, the manganese could also help us enter into the EV battery space because the other use of manganese is in batteries. And uh, so what we're planning to do uh, is uh, some metallurgical testing, to, first of all, to see if it's uh, amenable to DSO for, for steel. And all these companies that, they, that are producing uh, in Cote d'Ivoire currently, they just put it on a truck and ship it five, 600 kilometers south, and then it goes on a boat. And they wouldn't be doing it if they're not making money. Um, we also got an IP geophysical program planned, and uh, that should start after the current uh, in detail rock chip and mapping sampling program that we have. And we'll map every single outcrop along that 14 kilometers, and then figure out where we're gonna do the one kilometer IP geophysical program and our metallurgical test. So ESG, that's something that we've believed in, always have. So as far as the governance, uh, the board of uh, directors of MACO, uh, we were on the ground about a, a month ago, uh, and it was first time that we could actually all be there, so that was a really good thing. Environment, you can see a picture of a drill there. We don't you know, mow down trees and everything. We're really careful where we put our roads to, to access drilling. And uh, the social, uh, you know, that's, that's something that we both from a business perspective as well as um, uh, moral believe you have to help the local people. So in partnership with our, our drilling company, GeoDrill, who incidentally has a, uh, a booth here, uh, they partnered on us to, to drill our second water well for the community. And... Um, you know, I was at the, the opening ceremony along, uh, you know, with a bunch of our team, including GeoDrill representatives, and it was a very moving experience to see how we can make somebody's life that much better. 
Uh, and then we help the schools out with school supplies and things like that. So we do as much as we can. Um, so where are we going from here? Well, with our gold, uh, gold resource, uh, we're, we're on the path to grow it. And, and as I said, we're, we're you know, shooting for, for two, three, four million ounces. And, and then once, once we get a two million ounce resource, then we'll start doing scoping studies and things like that. And with the manganese, well, we've just made the discovery. It's very early stage, but we're moving it along, and, and uh, we think that we've got something that's uh, globally significant, and we can, uh, we can move that along and, and add value to the company. Thank you for listening.